Today, together, all of us, we are going to take a hammer and smash the idea that there are low kids and high kids in mathematics. Yes. Um, why do we talk about kids like this? Well, we do it because it's baked into our system. We are trained as teachers to sort and rank, I almost said, oh, work and sank. Work and sank kids into groups. But this doesn't work. This image from Todd Rose is, I'm sorry, this image from Todd Rose is two kids, same IQ score. Look how jagged their learning profile is. Look how multidimensional learning is. Even IQ, particularly, is not an actual descriptor of kids' understanding of kids' learning. Understanding kids on very narrow metrics, single scores, it's scientifically inaccurate. It doesn't match what we know about learning, about neuroplasticity, about intelligence, modern notions of intelligence. Kids are more complex. Math is also more complex. This image shows us, recently shared on Twitter, that K-12 mathematics is we can think of it as this narrow like stairway, this ladder, right? That idea constructs the idea of high and low kids. When we think of math as a narrow passageway, we got high kids, they race to the top, we got low kids, they're stuck at the bottom. Guess what, we stick them down there. We make sure that they can't move on until they have mastered the facts. But if math looks like this, where are the high and low kids? Where are the gaps? It doesn't make any sense. Because math is more multidimensional, math is more complicated, so high and low is nonsensical if we're actually teaching math. This matters for equity. This myth of low kids, high kids, disproportionately affects black, Latinx, indigenous students, emergent bilinguals, and students with disabilities. When we start thinking kids are low, our interactions change with them. And it really matters because of how we teach. We think that there is a myth that low kids need one thing, high kids need another thing. Low kids need remediation, high kids need enrichment. Or high kids can handle enrichment, right? That is false. To talk about it, my research is on dyslexia and mathematics. People with dyslexia are very diverse, but often have this set of challenges and this set of strengths. So if we think about kids in school who have trouble memorizing disconnected facts, are they low? Well, what if their learning profile also includes pattern finding, creativity, and high levels of visual spatial thinking? High or low, right? One is real math, one is school math. Whose problem is this? So let's, I'm gonna end by pulling you into a narrative that's powerfully affected me. How does it feel to be called low? I'm gonna read to you from a, uh, some, from some writing, wow, now I'm nervous, Woo! from some writing written by Lee Pelkey. She wrote, uh, she's a woman with a learning disability who wrote about how it felt. I was brought to the special room to catch up. No one ever said this to me directly, it's what I overheard. Scoring low, not trying, lazy. As the years passed, the shame turned into uh, self-hate. The research room teachers were very kind, but I believe now they underestimated me. I would do what they told me to do, but I was rarely asked to think. I think I did a lot of memorizing, but not much understanding. One day, the algebra teacher, she wasn't allowed to go to a general education algebra, but she was asked to come in. I said yes and grabbed a seat next to my friend. I didn't have a paper, a book, I just sat and listened. I was in a real class with normal students. As I sat in that class, something magical happened to me. I could understand what he was teaching. I was learning, I even started participating, raising my hand, answering questions. I was LD, but then again, I wasn't. I still couldn't multiply or divide very well. I used elaborate ways to come up with the answer, but I wasn't memorizing, I was thinking. Lynn t tells us to throw away these ideas of high and low kids. She's, well, oh, I just got a little affected. <laughs> she also tells us that they're listening. They are always listening. You cannot say that they are low next to them. They are listening and they're using what you say about them to make sense of themselves. I spend a lot of time reading memoirs from kids. I do a lot of research in this area. Again and again and again, it comes up. And these ideas come from old fashioned ideas about learning, learners, and math that we need to totally get rid of. Inaccurate, unscientific, unhelpful, unethical, and counterproductive, is my opinion. So, we need to smash this idea of low kids and high kids. We're gonna call it out every time, every time, even in front of kids, although I don't know how to do that. Um, 
And then we're going to invite kids like Lynn to get access to what math really is, which is magical, right? Thank you. Yeah. That was magical.